hello, Renee Slamont here and Minnie, my little monkey face. You guys, we're going to get into what bothers me most about cheating in a minute. And it's not what you'd think. It's not what you'd think. But I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about Australia because I had some of you guys have been so supportive in my very last minute trip out there and my very last minute um, chance to go see my daughter graduate. And so I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes. You're all asking me how the trip was. You guys. Oh my God, I'm going to cry again. No, I'm going to cry again. Because a lot of people are separated by their loved ones right now with COVID and everything. So in that regard, we are not unique. Um, but she is no, but people are separated. It's terrible. In my case, it's my only child. It's my daughter. We're very close. And she was, she's on the other side of the world. She comes home next month. We had the best three days together. It was a total of five days, including two were travel. So it was very quick. But I got to see where she lives. I got to meet people I hadn't met. I got the ceremony was beautiful. It just was very overwhelming when I saw her. Oh my God, I can't even. Um, I wouldn't let her go. And she let me, which any of you, you know, with a child who's 22, you know, sometimes they get like, all right, that's enough. I could have held it for four hours. She would have let me. She understood. Um... I almost missed my flight going over there, you guys. My, I had one hour of a layover in L.A., yet my plane in Orlando took off 55 minutes late. Yeah. So on the plane, I'm doing the math, and I'm like, I'm not going to make it. And the agent is telling me, no, you probably won't. There's a shuttle you have to take. And I'm thinking, oh, but the guy on the phone told me the gate's right next door to where I land. She's like, oh, no, you need to get into a bus and blah, 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 blah. When I tell you it was by the skin of my teeth, running through the LA air, I mean, the whole thing was one big rush. And I have to be honest with you, I'm not a good traveler with that part of it. People say, how could you go? How long is the flight? Oh, my God, I could never do 15 hours nonstop. Yes, you could. You've sat on your couch watching movies, uh, you know, on a lazy day. That's all you do. But it's the logistics. It's the in-between part that made me a wreck. I'm very happy to be back on soil here. I'm very happy I had the experience. It was incredible. And now on to her next chapter. And that will unfold in the next few months. But I thank you all for your well wishes. I got so much support from you guys. And I know you know how it feels. You haven't seen your daughter in so long. I mean, she's graduating college. It was a big, big deal. And I missed the monkey. Didn't I, baby? She's unfazed. <laughs> the topic of cheating. The topic is as old as time as old as time as long as there's been people there's been cheating and every single talk show has done segments with panels of cheaters and they ask them why and they have people with dual families and serial cheaters like our narcissists we usually discuss on this channel are a big part of cheating because all they do is cheat right they're serial cheaters but I've never been satisfied with any insight the cheaters offer, ever. Because there's so much I just flat out don't understand. Like, for example, if you indeed are someone who can't envision monogamy for the rest of your life, then don't. Find your own relationship with its own defined parameters unique to what you and your partner can agree on. Polygamy is a thing for that very reason. And guess what? It takes out the lying part all together. Now, some can't picture that life, right? With the possibilities of what with like jealousies and ugliness that can probably ensue. But Okay, so then that's not for you. But if everyone was just honest with each other, perhaps more people would line up right. 
If you're someone who can't picture a lifelong commitment, then why get into the game? You're not doing the spouse any favors by bestowing marriage upon them. What, like it's a privilege for that person? Just leave. Go find what you seek. What I guess I'm saying that bothers me the most about the cheating, what bothers me so much about the cheating is don't take my choice from me. Tell me beforehand and take your licks. It's the cowardice in the cheating that often gets overlooked. People, rightfully so, focus on the betrayal, the destruction of the family unit, the dishonesty, the lies, all of those things, I agree, are beyond any pain imaginable. Each of them could warrant and carry their own video, worthy of a half hour's worth of material, easy. What doesn't get referred to very much is how spineless and weak the person is who chooses this behavior. When I say just tell me, I am actually saying that. Have the fortitude. You want to take this route? It is that much of a foregone conclusion that you can't stop yourself? Then tell me. Ahead of time. And let me know before it happens. One little sentence is all it would take. But no. They don't. And that's what bothers me along with the something else about it. I'm going to explain why my mindset. You know I'll break it down how awful of an extra awful that this part is. The deceitful angle of the cheater is the part I can never get behind. You're bored. The spark is gone. You haven't had relations with your spouse in a year. You're being mistreated by your partner and need to go outside to get the validation that you think you need. Or you're just a snake. I don't care the reason. If you're doing it behind my back, that's the real offense. Now, I'm being slightly facetious, but not really because I mean it. Just tell me. But no one does. Why? Because they're cowards. They're cowards. They're afraid of the outcome. She may leave me. She may be hurt. She may be mad. She may retaliate. She may divorce me. You know what? Yes, 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 and yes. But so what? You're choosing an action, and any of those things can and should be the consequences of that action. Or at least have a chance to be the consequences. By not telling me, this is the part that kills me. You're taking my choice from me. You're keeping all the choices to yourself. For all the other partner knows, the other may say, fine, go ahead. I'd love to have an affair too. You go your way, I'll go mine, and we'll meet back here in a week. Or how about, you know what? I've been meaning to talk to you about having an open relationship. Or, you know what? Fine, but I want a divorce just for you thinking it. My point is, only the ultimate coward does this behind the back. You either divorce or cheat. Right? True? Yeah, that's it. You divorce or cheat. But another option is to grow up, be honest with the person about how your intentions are making you feel, about, how, about what you're feeling as of late, and take your licks, whatever they are. You want to play? You want to swim in that ugly pond? Betray someone? Be an adult about it. If we took the dishonesty out of the behavior, it would just make so much more sense to me. But they're cowards, people who cheat behind the back. They're afraid of ruining what they have going. They're afraid of actually having their spouse choose 
to dump them. But that's not fair. So you can decide in secret to carry on while I'm trucking along, doing your laundry, cleaning the house, raising our children, and I'm in the dark, and you're off having this other second life? It astounds me that the cheater has so much arrogance that they could embark on the behavior, lie so much to try to cover it up, live the lie, of its ongoing duplicitous nature once you start it, there's got to be lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. All piled on top of each other? Where are you going? It'll be a lie. Why are you late? It'll be a lie. So-and-so called. I thought you were with them. It'll be a lie to cover up the lie because you forgot to cover your tracks. It's all so much effort. And people say, well, of course a cheater's never going to say, you know, I, I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling like I'm about to step out of the marriage. I'm fe- Oh, so that means those people, they what? They don't want to split the money? That's what it is. They're afraid of the outcome. They don't want to lose their home. They don't want to break up their family. But I love my family. Do you? Do you really love your family? Okay, so even if you say, yes, I really do love my family. Even if you say that, my question is so but you're you're loving yourself first you're putting your needs first loving your children especially is supposed to go above yourself right and the narcissist that we normally discuss on this channel we know doesn't put anyone above themselves so it is very often and always (laughs) not very often It is always that a narcissist, that's their number one thing that they do, is they constantly have a revolving door of people, and they will cheat on their spouses the whole time. So to ask somebody who has that disorder of narcissistic personality disorder to put their family above and come clean is is just asking for the impossible. But what about the rest of the people that don't have the disorder, but they just make a misstep? So that means then that you felt the misstep in secret was okay and what you're just going to go forward and pretend it didn't happen so you have a secret from your spouse forever i could there's no way on earth i could carry that i would walk in the door and say i just slept with somebody else like it would fall right out of my mouth yet people do it all the time to each other And what I'm trying to say is, just don't... I said to somebody once, I've actually said it to the last few people that I had any kind of lengthy dating experience. I said, do me a favor. If you ever decide that you want to go, you know, you see someone you like or you want to... Just let me know. One person did. He said, I'm here to break up. It was a 180. It was from in love to not. He was like, I don't want to cheat on you. I don't want to cheat. So in other words, there's somebody else. No, there isn't. Of course, there already was but he hadn't gone over the line yet. I'll take it, that's fine, we broke up. But he told me. He was a snake and a narcissist too, but at least he told me. I had made sure I begged for that and asked for that, and he apparently felt the pull so strong and was done, and he chose to leave and go do his thing. I was shocked, because looking back, he is a narcissist, so he could have just stayed and played with me. Maybe he realized, oh, this isn't the girl to mess with. I don't know why. He did choose to tell me, and he left. And I was devastated, but I would have been more devastated had he not done that, did something behind my back, and then that unfolds. Rip that Band-Aid off. Just hurt us right away and then leave. Some women might not agree. They might say, you know what? I don't see it. I don't know it. It's not harming me. I don't want my family broken up. Let him do what he's got to do. I've heard women say that. So we're all different. But I don't care what the circumstances, I want to know. And I want people to not be a coward about it. And it could be man or woman. It could be man or woman. But when you do something like that, you've decided for the whole family and all people involved that you count more than anyone else 
in the whole equation. And it's that arrogance that bothers me. So you don't want to be honest. You don't want to lose your world. Okay, so don't do the behavior is what I would say. Seek counseling with your spouse. Seek, well, you don't understand. It's been so many years. We don't even talk anymore. We're not a relationship. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they have a, a, a solution for that. It's called separation, divorce. I don't want a divorce. We have so much in, we can't. A business this, kids that. Our families are intertwined so much. It's been 30 years. So you're just going to cheat? Okay, if all of the logistics I just said are true, and neither one of you know that you want a divorce, but you feel that you're not getting what you need at home, isn't that a conversation you should have with each other? Your spouse might surprise you. They might come out with a sentence like I said earlier and say, you know what, I'll do it too. Let's go our separate ways for six months. Get things out of your system. Come back. Maybe we'll rediscover each other. Maybe we'll re... I mean, there's so much possibility and people say, are you out of your mind? Nobody's ever going to be honest. That's a shame. That's a shame. Because I don't like being duped. Let alone, let's not even talk about what physically you could be bringing home to your partner. Some people protect themselves. Some do not. Some do not. They don't. So what, you're going and you're sleeping with other people and then you're coming home and you're sleeping with me? Thank you for that. How selfish can that be? So you're not even concerned with your spouse's health? And I say spouse because that's really when the cheating is, right? Like I can say the narcissist cheated all day long and twice on Sunday. The truth is, I went out with him for a couple of years. We weren't married. When you are married and you've had that union, that's the big one. It's such a betrayal. And it's being a coward. So you're afraid to tell me, you're afraid of the outcome. So it's that expression that I don't understand. You want your cake and eat it too. I don't really understand that expression because if you had a cake, wouldn't you eat it? Like, I don't get that expression. But that's what essentially they're doing. And they're deciding for us. No, no, I, oh, I detest that part. You're making my choice for me. For all you know, I might've accepted it or I might've booted you out. Have the courage. Have the fortitude. So you're going to make that bold decision that affects the whole family in secret because your arrogance is such that you count above and beyond anyone else in the picture, including your children. So what do you think? You don't think of your children when you do it? Like I'm talking to people who cheat. I feel like they're listening. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That's the part I just can't get behind I get it I knew a couple once and I was the person I was close to was the one cheated on and they were married and I said I can't get involved in being mad at your spouse for cheating on you I didn't like the spouse for a million other reasons and this person knew that but I said as far as the cheating it's very personal. For all I know, you were a terrible spouse or you had a terrible situation or they had, but I will never, get, right, so that's personal. Why somebody, that's why I listed all those reasons. You might have not, I know a couple that hasn't had sex in 16 years. 16. I know another couple that hasn't had sex in eight years. That person cheats. The 16 years doesn't. But anyway, back to my example what I always say is that's between two people, what they have going and what the spouse is thinking when they cheat. I can't fault the spouse and be mad at the spouse for that. That's between the two of you. You might have been a terrible spouse to the person who cheated. But I can fault them for not saying something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will never, ever get behind it. And cheating by nature of it is a sneaky thing, right? So what I'm requesting is an impossibility for the masses. But I think that everyone would be able to make better decisions going forward and to be more honest, if they were more honest about what they intended to do. 
if they said, oh, you know, I'm really attracted to this person at work. I'm starting to think about, you know, being with them. And I'm, I know I'm flirting with them. And I know I'm spending too long at the water cooler with them. And I know things are getting... Go home and tell your spouse. Yes, I do mean that. Yes. Uh-huh. Why won't you? Because you're afraid. You're a coward. There's no other way. There's no other explanation. It's cowardice. And that kills me. I don't like it. And I don't like the deceit, of course. I don't like the breaking the vows, of course. I don't like the denigration it does to the other human when they have been cheated on and how, how worthless they feel. And regardless of what they've been trying to do for you, here you go and you go behind their back. But see, again, I say it. It's behind the back. That's the part that kills me. It's the part that kills me. I mean, you see it in movies. Some of you know people. They have an open relationship, right? So they may even say, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll be in the other room. Or go ahead. I'm going to have a night out too. Or go ahead. Like, I don't know. I've never been married 20, 30, 40 years. People do all kinds of things to stay together and make it work. Knock yourselves out if it's consensual and mutual. Cheating is neither. And it's not fair. And that is the part that kills me the most. You've taken my choice. It's not fair. You're doing it sneaky. And you're not taking your licks. Be a big person. Tell me right out. Well, what if she divorces me? Okay, so you don't want her to divorce you? Well, no. Okay, so can't you just resist and not cheat? If you knew that she, if she knew she would divorce you, can't you just resist? Well, I can't because you don't know what it's like. And our marriage is this and our marriage is that and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then talk to your spouse. Work out what you can. Well, we I tried that. It couldn't work out. Okay. So did you land on, okay, then I think we should sp separate. Well, no, we can't do that. Then you need to s come up with something. But to go behind the back of a person is never acceptable. I don't care what the circumstances are. It is cowardly and it is... It's spineless, and it's unattractive. So part of the reason I wouldn't be able to be with that person again or it would take a lot of work is I would be unattracted to someone who was spineless. And I learned that with my narcissist. It, I found him unattractive. I was like, ew, like you're gross. Like you're this spineless creature roaming the earth just thinking everything's yours and you can just take whatever you want without any circumstances or repercussions? That's an unattractive person to me. So essentially you're, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You have a miserable marriage. You need to go outside and get yours because you're miserable here. Going outside and get yours will come to light eventually and then that's going to make your spouse further unattracted to you and never want to be with you again. So that's the marriage you want to stay in? And I'm not proposing divorce for people. I'm proposing honesty for people. I'm proposing that we all just talk to each other. And maybe you can arrive at a solution before you pick one for yourself. Who are you that you need to pick? You get to pick? There's two people involved. And if there are kids, there's that many more people involved. You don't just get to decide. Oh, it just kills me. It kills me. That part about cheating kills me. Just don't take my choice from me. I might surprise you. I might not. I might go knock yourself out. Go ahead. Seriously, you don't know. Two people between them. People can react all different ways. But don't take the choice from me. I should be involved in the choice. I should be involved in something that is going to affect our relationship. Whether you keep it secret for the rest of your life, it's affecting our relationship. It's in your brain. You've done this experience. You're thinking of this experience. Now you probably think you could do it again. No. Uh-uh. If it affects the relationship and the family, I deserve to know. I just want to mention this because I think if more people requested to be told, maybe they would be told. I was once. I was told. He said, I just don't want, and I said, so there's somebody else. No, there isn't. That doesn't make any sense. 
I said, you're breaking up with me, stating you don't want to have to cheat on me, and but you're not. But so I'm saying that, and so it was still lies involved. But at least he broke up. Respect, respect. Even if it was a 180 and knocked me on my butt, he broke up. So all I wish is that people could be honest with each other going forward. I'm very happy to be back on U.S. soil. I thank you all for being so supportive. Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share as we go forward with our new schedule. It's um, Any change is exciting to me. I like to see how it unfolds. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as we know, is our new schedule. I'm so appreciative for the support I've received from all of you stating that you would watch regardless whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Monday through Friday. So I appreciate it. I hope you guys like me suggesting the little videos in the corner to take you through the days that we're not posting. And I'm sorry that when I was in Australia, there was a day there that it didn't really post. You know, it, I like to do like 7, 7.30 in the morning. And I think on, on that Wednesday I got back, it was like 10.30 at night. So, but it was still on the Wednesday, so I was happy. But it was very, very late. And I thank you so much for all sticking with me. I'm so happy to be back. My daughter says I say this every time I travel. Anywhere you go is lovely. There are so many beautiful parts of this world. But I say it every time I land. It was wonderful, but I'm so glad to be home. It's nerve-wracking out there in the world right now traveling. You don't know at any moment they might, you might get someone who raises an eyebrow at your vaccination card or raises an eyebrow at your COVID test or raises an eyebrow at the digital thing you had to fill out. It was very nerve-wracking for me. I'm back now. I'm very relaxed, and I thank you for sticking with me.